Hello everyone. We will continue the topic classical reports. And in the previous videos, we studied a classical report is the report in which we will display the output using the right statement. Now, what we will do, we will take a requirement and we will develop the classical report based upon that. Now, what customer is saying? Customer is saying that he or she wants a report in which the input will be order number and output will be details of that order number from which particular table order header table. I will again repeat the requirement. What is the requirement? We want to develop a classical report in which the input will be order number and the output will be details of that order number from which particular table order header table. Suppose simple example. If I will go to the contents, what will be the input? Input will be order number. Suppose I am giving the order number as one. What will be the output? Output will be details of that order number. Suppose I am giving order number five. So whenever I will give order number five, the output will be details of order number five only. So based upon the input, the output should come. We will develop a classical report for the same, same purpose. Now, what customer is saying? Yes, at a time, we will only pass the single order number. Then we will go for multiple order numbers also. So firstly, we will start with a single order number. You all know whenever you are going for single order number, you need to take a parameter. So what we will do, we will create a program and we will give the input with the help of parameters. So I will start with this particular program. I will go to SC38 transaction port. We'll give some name to the program. Suppose I'm saying ZPRG2. I'm saying order details. We'll say order header details because as of now, we are only going for header table. So we are creating a program in which input will be order number. Output will be details of order number from the order header table. I will go for create. I will give some title to the program. To display the order header details. I will take the type as executable program. I will go for save. I will save it as a local object. I will activate the program. Now we will see how to give input. We all know whenever you want to go for a single input, we will take help of parameters. I will give some name to the parameter. A good programmer follows the best naming convention. So I'm writing P underscore and I'm writing O N O. You can give any name. It's your wish. I'm writing type. Now I will simply, simply pass the data element of order number. I'll put dot. This is the best way to declare parameter type data element. But this data element is data element has a domain of numeric 10. It means this P underscore ONO is of numeric type. It has a length of 10. I will activate. End user will not understand P underscore ONO. 
So can we give the selection text? How to give the selection text? Go to text element selection text. Now I will give the input. I'll give the text. Now you can manually give the text also or you can choose dictionary reference. Whenever we will choose dictionary reference, the ultimate text will come from the data element. You can see order number came automatically and from where it came, it came from the data element because data element is all about the field label. You can pass manually also, it's your wish. In this scenario, I choose the dictionary reference. So now our input is ready. Input is ready. Now, whenever we will give the input, whenever we will give the input, see this input we are giving on which particular layer, extremely important understanding is going on. With this input, suppose I am giving one. This input we are giving on which particular layer? Application layer. This input will go to which particular layer? Database layer. From the database, it will fetch the data for which particular order number? One. From which particular table? Order header table. Now, this input will go to database layer. It will fetch the data of order number one and data will come on to which particular layer? Application layer. See, from the database layer, you read the data, you fetch the data, but ultimately data will come on to which particular layer? Application layer. Now the question is, whenever the data will come on the application layer, you need to store the data somewhere. So where you will store the data? For that time being, you always store the data in the internal table. Internal table. It will be a temporary storage. Once we display the output, internal table will be blank. But for that time being, you need to store that data somewhere. Where you will store? You will store that data in the internal table. Now we all know we want to create an internal table. So firstly, we need to create a structure type. But a structure? Structure is a collection of columns. Now. Suppose from the order header table, we will take order number, we will take order date, we will take total amount and currency. It's because suppose we do not want to display all the column data. We only want to display the data of these four columns. It means we will create a structure type of how many column? Four column. Our internal table will consist of how many column? Four column. Because suppose I am saying table has 200 column, but I only want to display five column. Customer only require five column. So there's no need to take 200 columns. You can simply, simply go for those columns which are required in the output. Suppose in our current scenario, we require four column. It means we will create a structure type of how many column? Four columns. I will go to back button. Now I will create a structure type. You all know very well, whenever I want to create a structure type, the keyword is types. Begin off. Tab. I will give some name to the structure type. Suppose I am saying LTY underscore data. LTY local type and I put comma. Comma means this structure type has not entered yet. And in the previous videos, I told you that the best way to create a structure is open the table in a new session and just do the copy paste. There will not be any mistakes. Now, what is first column? Order number, time, data element of order number. 
com. What is second column? Order date. Type. Data element of order date. What is third thing? Total amount. Type. Data element of total amount. Next thing will be currency. Type data element of currency. Now I will end this particular structure. Structure type end of now dot. Dot means line has been ended. Now I will declare internal table and work areas. Data. LT underscore data means local table. You all know if you are using structure type to declare the internal table, the keyword is type table of. Now, what is the name of the structure? LTY underscore data. Now, we will declare the work area. I am writing data. LWA underscore data type lty underscore so our internal table has how many column four columns our work area has how many column four column but never never use table word with the work area because work area always always go for single record in case of internal table you only need to use the keyword table i'll check the syntax and i will so, what is the summary of the video? What we studied into this video up to this level, we took a requirement. We are developing a classical report in which the input will be order number, single input of order number. So, we took parameter and output will be details of the order number from which particular table, order header table. So, we created a structure of how many column, four column. We declare an internal table and we declare the work area. In the next video, we will learn the queries, means how to fetch data from the database layer and how to bring data on the application layer. This part will study in the next video. Thank you.